Hey folks, welcome back. I'm Dave and we're here in my shop where I build E-War guitars. Well, this is going to be episode number 17 in the series where I'm building this guy right here. And I'm really, really digging it. I just, I'm still happy about this color and the way that finish came out. I did the matte finish. I did uh, just a natural clear on the whole thing, but I did a bit of a, a coffee burst around the edge and I'm just thrilled to death. And, and I'll tell you, I'm more times than not, I am dissatisfied with the color or the way a guitar looks when it's all said and done, generally based on the color. So this time I'm really happy about this one. I'm still kind of just, I'm still kind of loving it. But anyway, so enough about that. So it's time to move on again uh, to the next stage of this guitar. And I've got a couple different things going on in this video. One thing is, uh, with that matte finish, I was, uh, see, I was going to use brass hardware on this thing, or brass, it's supposed to be gold, but it's brass, uh, on this guitar. But you know, that regular old shiny brass just looked too blingy with this guitar because now this guy's got kind of an antique-ish look to it. And I want to sort of keep that going. So one thing I've been tinkering with this week was figuring out how to get some of that, um, you know, that really yellowy shine off of this, off of this gold hardware. And, and I really came down to the, to the realization that what I just need to do, I tried tarnishing and all that kind of stuff. I use vinegar and salt and some different things and, and, and trying to tarnish it, stripping off the lacquer. And when it really comes down to it, I think just stripping off the lacquer off of the thing with a piece of this um, Super Aslix 360 grit paper winds up looking something like that. And I know that's going to naturally tarnish now because there's no finish on the thing. But I think that's going to look pretty cool and I think that's a great place to start with. So it's just kind of a brushed brass finish on this uh, on this hardware and I th think that's going to look pretty cool. So anyway, so that's one thing and I'm not going to show that because I'm simply sitting there rubbing the hardware with in, in between my fingers with a piece of sandpaper. So that's what I'm going to do for that. Uh, so the focus of this video is going to be on me uh, uh, leveling, crowning, and polishing these frets and bringing them to their finished state. So uh, why don't I go ahead and get the camera turned down and we're going to get cranked away on that right now. Okay, so the very first thing we need to do is we need to ensure that this uh, guitar neck is as just as straight as we could possibly get it. Uh, now, so I've got the guitar body rested on this, uh, this neck support here and this neck is t totally unsupported. And so now I'm going to take, this is my short uh, scale length uh, precision straight edge. And it goes down, now this straight edge, I'm, I'm leveling the fretboard, not the top of the frets. So I've got this guy sitting right down the middle of this thing right here. And I've got this high, this very bright light, this is an LED light right here that's just kind of a long skinny light that goes right along the fretboard. And I'm able to look under here and man, I mean, you could see it. You could see it if there is nothing more than a molecule gap in there. And, uh, and this I can see I've got a pretty good gap here in the middle. When I say pretty good, I mean a couple thousandths of an inch. But it's definitely something that needs to be taken care of. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this Allen key in here and start taking this out. Okay, so I think I am just as just as perfect as I can get. Let me just ensure this thing is going right down the, let me just check. I am right down the center of that fretboard. And I mean that thing is, that thing is flat. We are really good. Perfectly flat on the top of the fretboard. Now we're okay to go ahead and level the frets to match the, the fretboard. So, uh, okay, so now what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to get this fretboard covered up with some tape because we're gonna be doing a lot of grinding and everything on these uh, frets and we don't wanna damage that fretboard. So let's get this thing covered up. Okay, so now that we're all masked off, the next thing I'm, I wanna do is we've got to level the tops of these frets. So, um, what I've got here, I've got myself set up. I put a, a, a folded up towel under this end, and I've got my neck support laying a long way on the neck. And I've got my neck, my neck is touching nicely on both sides of this thing. So I feel like I've got nice, as about as equal a support as I can get on the neck. I'm trying to uh, 
I'm trying to keep it where I don't bend it or anything. And I'm going to be quite gentle, actually, as I'm sanding the thing, too. So uh, the tools I'm going to use for this is I've got some 320 grit uh, uh, sticky back sandpaper. I've got this 12 inch radius beam, which is I really like this. It's just about the full length of the neck. Uh, in fact, it is. It covers every fret all at one time. I like that. I've got this other just a, a one inch wide beam, too, that I may use, uh, uh, you know, for a spot uh, spot sanding or whatever. And then I've got my black Sharpie right here. So what we're going to do, uh, we have to determine um, which of these frets is high and which one is low. So we're going to mark each one with the black Sharpie right on the very crown of the fret. And then we're going to sand them down, and we're going to sand them down till, as it, till we reach where all the black is gone. Okay, I don't want to sand past it, so I'm going to watch very carefully. Some of the black is going to disappear immediately as soon as this sandpaper hits it, and others are going to take a little work at it to uh, to get rid of it. So we want to keep going till all, as soon as all the black is gone, we're going to stop, and that should be where each top of each fret should be level with all the rest of them. And that is what we're going to attempt to do here. And then actually when we're all said and done, I've got a shorter wooden one of these uh, radius uh, sanding beams, and I'm going to taper off the last five frets here too. So we'll do that. Once we get them all leveled, then we're going to come back and do a little more work on that, that last five frets down there and, uh, and, and taper those off a little bit towards the, towards the bridge. Okay, so there we go, all marked. Now we're going to take some of this sandpaper. Okay, put that guy aside. Now we're going to, with very, very little pressure, really just the weight of the sanding beam itself, I'm going to guide this back and forth. Okay, let's see what we got. So, let's see, that one is gone on that side. We're hitting uh, some spots, we're not hitting others. That one is completely taken down all the way, that one's down all the way. So that means that those couple of guys are high frets and they're right next to a low one. That one's barely been touched. It's been touched down here a little bit, but not much. So, this is uh, what we're gonna keep doing. We're gonna do, 10 or 15 swipes and then stop and look at it and kind of gauge where we're at and keep going until all that black is uh, sanded off the very crown of the fret, each fret. Okay, so I think I finally got that guy down now. Um, I've hit every fret, just barely on these three guys right here, but I'm gonna go along now with my fret rocker. I wanna check each set of frets here. You move it over three at a time. This is the way to determine if everything's going to be good. And I like going until there is absolutely no rocking whatsoever. And I'm hoping I have it now. Okay, I think that, uh, I think that looks good. Now I've got my uh, sanding block here that I've got two layers of tape on. This is from before, uh, the last guitar I built. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to lay this guy up here. Now I'm gonna put me two layers of tape right here too. And uh, 
and that should elevate this block enough to where I'm only going to be hitting, let's say, the bottom five frets or the top five, depending on how you look at it. Right there. Okay, so that's an angle created by four pieces of tape. That angle is four pieces of tape thick. And I'm just going to do this guy right here. In fact, what I should do, why don't I mark these again? Now I'm thinking about it. Oop. One, two, three, four, Oop. five. And let's see how we do uh, tapering this down. Okay, we've hit one, two, three, four frets. We haven't quite touched the fifth one yet, so let's just keep going. Just starting to touch it right there. Still not quite, but we've got those four frets, 22, 21, 20, and 19. I think they look good. We'll go ahead and leave that fifth fret alone. So I think I'm pretty satisfied with that. So let's get this guy off of here. So we get a nice little fall away and we'll level the rest of the way through. Now, I'm gonna blow this uh, uh, metal filings off here. We're gonna remark the top of the frets and we're gonna go through it with our Z file and we're gonna recrown them. Anyway, the next step we're gonna do is I'm gonna remark these guys because we're gonna now go through it with my fret crowning tool. And we want to do the same thing. We do not want to change the height of these frets since we've already gotten that straightened out on the last step. But we do want to put a crown back in it so it's just the very peak of the fret right in the middle of its location is the only thing that's sticking up. So that way the guitar will stay intonated properly. And um, when you hit a note, it'll be that note. So we don't want, in other words, we don't want the... Uh, we don't want this fret crowned off center of the fret because then it's the frets no longer in this right position So anyway, so what I want to do is I use this tool here This is called uh, a Z file. I get it from Stu, Stu Mac and this is the offset one in other words This side is of the V. There's a V in here, and that's a diamond uh, That's diamond uh, filings in here and this side of the uh, V is at a low angle and this side of the V is at a high angle. And then the back side is just the opposite. It's the other way around. So what I do is I will file it on this side and it's gonna cut one side steep and the other side shallow. And then I'll flip it and cut it again and it does the, it does the opposite way. So what it does, it works at one side at a time and keeping the, uh, keeping the peak right in the middle. So you go back and forth and it keeps the peak in the middle. Anyway. Uh, it's a great tool. It's uh, it works quickly, and uh, and I just love it. I've had other uh, other uh, uh, crowning files before, and this one I really like. So, anyway, so I'm just going to start at the end, and I'm basically going to try to follow a 12-inch radius. Okay, I'll do a few swipes, flip it, do a few more, flip it. And you could see, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but my black line is getting narrower and narrower. So it's gone from a wide line to it's quite narrow now. And I'm just, I want to get it down to where it's, it's barely a thin pencil line basically, right on the top of the fret, right in the middle. And I'm getting very close to that now. And I don't want the black line to completely go away because that means I've then cut down into the height of the fret and I absolutely do not want to do that. I think that looks pretty good right there. One more little swipe on that side. That one is good. A very, a very thin black line right down the middle and I think that looks great.
All right, so that wasn't too bad. Um, once I got past these first few frets here, it went really pretty quickly. Now I still see my black line on every one of these things, um, but I am gonna go through once again and I'm gonna check this thing with my fret rocker because you just never know and you don't wanna, you don't wanna finish these frets if there's any kind of rocking going on. You wanna take care of it now. So I'm gonna very carefully check each fret in three places and try to find any rocking whatsoever. Nice. Let's check up here one more time. Nice. I think that really, uh, I think that looks good. I don't get any rocking on anything. So uh, I think we're pretty good for that. I think I'm good. Okay, the next step in this fret job is going to be to round these ends. Uh, they've already been beveled and, and they've been cut back all the way flush with the end of the fretboard. But now we've got to take this little file right here and we're going to, going to round off those bottom corners and also get it to basically round up the edges of the fret. So um, this tool, this is a Stu Mac, it's a fret end file. Uh, it's just a tiny little thing. It's got a rounded safe edge on one edge and this edge is just square, but I always keep this rounded edge down towards the uh, wooden fretboard and that helps protect it, although I'll cut through the tape quite a bit. Um, it does overall do a good job of protecting the thing. And I'll just start on the on each fret, and I'm basically gonna go, gonna try to hook that bottom corner. And I'll do two or three swipes on it like this. And then I'm also gonna kind of roll it up the fret like so because I want it to round the fret. I want it kind of a hemispherical end on the, on the fret. Okay, so those fret ends look uh, really nice. They feel really smooth and comfortable. I just went over it real quick with 320 going this way on it. Uh, but that little file did a great job. And a few of them I hit across the top too with this bigger row. Uh, this is a safe edge triangular file too. So but anyway, I think they came out great. And uh, it is time to move on now to the next thing. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sand these frets very carefully and we're gonna get rid of all the scratches on them without touching that top. I still gotta to avoid that top because I do not wanna change the, uh, the top flatness of these frets. And as you can see, I still have my uh, fret rocker here that we're gonna check this uh, periodically throughout the time we're sanding these frets. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with 320 grit paper. I'm just gonna tear me small little pieces like this and I like to fold it in two, like so, and I kind of hold my thumbnail, I bend it up against the side of the fret, and I'll use my thumbnail to put pressure against the side of the fret, and I'll try to get all the way to the end, and I'll sand it, then I'll bend it the other way, and I'll get the other side of the fret. So I'm basically sanding up the sides of the fret without really hitting the top. The top winds up getting hit just purely because it's too hard not to, but I'm trying not to get on top, so to preserve that top line. And you can still see, even though I've hit that top, I can still faintly see that line there. So, and I want to keep my eyes out there for the whole time because we do not want to change the height of these frets. So first I'll go through the whole thing with 320. Then I'll go back to the beginning, start again, I'll go 400. Then I have, I have let's see, I have 600. Uh, there's my 400. I have 800, uh, 1200, and 2000 grit. And we'll see. Now, normally, I would go back when I'm all done sanding it, 
I would take my Dremel tool with a, a buffing wheel on, on the end and then buff them. Boy, that would bring them to a real shine. But if you remember when we started this video, I'm doing all my uh, hardware on this thing and just kind of a brushed uh, brass look. So I think I'm just going to sand this up to, I want to get it real slick so the strings feel good on it. I'll probably go to at least 1200, maybe even 2000, but I'm going to stop there without buffing it. I'm going to try to leave it with just uh, the brushed look to them. Anyway, it's a bit of a tedious process, but that is what you do. You just go through and you, you carefully sand them down. So this is uh, 800 grit, and I'm just finishing up with this uh, grit here. I've got a few more on this side here, and I'm thinking that's about the right sheen level. Here's another one. Yeah, I'm pretty, uh, I think I'm pretty pleased with that. It's very slick. Um, I think the strings would be good on that. I may hit it with 1200 just see what it looks like but I think before I do that I want to go back and check it with my fret rocker again to make sure I haven't altered anything so first let me cut a piece here hang on I've been sort of going over these ends too with each grit trying to soften them every time I do a grit when I'm done with it I cut me a slightly bigger piece and I hit these ends and my tape is all but shot all right so let me get that fret rocker on there let's see what we got here Okay, I think that's pretty nice. Um, so let's see, that was 800. I think I want to just for the heck of it, let me go over it lightly with 1200. Let's see what happens. Hey, I thought it'd be interesting to show you all the little scraps of sandpaper that I just went through doing this. This is all those different grits from 320 up through 1200. Use a bunch of them. And I'm about to throw them all away. You can tear them off, you get a couple frets with them. And uh, anyway, it's quite a tedious process. So that's what the kind of sandpaper, little tiny pieces you go through like that. But in the end, it is definitely worth it because uh, it came out really, really nice. Okay, so the last thing that has to happen to this fretboard is it needs two or three or four good coats of boiled linseed oil. But before I do that, I'm going to take my little scraper here. I just pulled a new edge on it and it's pretty sharp. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to clean up all of these spaces in between the frets. <sighs> Getting off any glue residue scratches that happen just whatever i'm just going over real quickly just to clean off those edges real good and to make sure it looks really nice then i'm going to put wipe on some boiled linseed oil and i think i'll probably do this has already got a couple coats on it from several videos ago I put it on there before I glued in the frets just to kind of uh, protect the wood from glue getting in there but now it's time to go ahead and do it for real this time and get something in there to kind of enhance the color of the fretboard a little bit and to seal it up good
right, so I wound up putting on three more coats of boiled linseed oil onto my fretboard, my tailpiece down here, and my truss rod cover. And, uh, and, and that's on top of the couple coats I did on the fretboard from before. So I've got, I think I've got uh, very adequate uh, coverage of boiled linseed oil on that stuff. And I'm really digging the contrast between the absolutely flat finish of the boiled linseed oil and the, uh, the uh, matte finish on the body and the neck and everything. So I'm really digging this whole thing. I'm really, really happy with the way this is coming out. My frets, uh, I've brought them up to a 1200 grit sandpaper and I stopped right there. I didn't do any final polishing. And that left it just kind of a brushed brass looking uh, finish on it. Incidentally, by the way, these frets are not brass. They're the gold frets, but that's actually copper mixed in with the nickel that gives it that, uh, that brassish looking color right there. So, but anyway, so I'm doing that same thing. I'm sanding my other pieces of uh, gold hardware down uh, like that too. So I think that's a pretty good match between the, between the, uh, the brass hardware and my fret. So anyway, uh, that is how I do my fret job on these things. And uh, this guitar is now ready to start getting put together once I get the rest of that hardware sanded up. Um, anyway, I hope you all dug the little video we just did. And uh, if you like this sort of thing, how about you give me a like and subscribe. So anyway, come on back next week and we're either going to be putting some hardware on this thing or we're going to be making pickups. I haven't decided yet. So anyway, come on back and find out next week. So in the meantime, God bless you. You all have a wonderful week and we'll see you on the next one.